for R&D Reviews, I'm Rob. I'm Brent. And we're going to be putting together a series of YouTube Hello and welcome to this edition of RBND Reviews. I am Rob. And I'm Dave. And we just got out of seeing the last installment of the Hobbit trilogy, The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. And Dave, I know you've been waiting all for what, almost three years for this, you know, the whole thing. Well to not happen. bad. I mean I've been I've just been waiting ever since the uh, the other one uh, was done and out and everything. I've been waiting this whole year for this one to come out. Yeah, but for me, I've always been, I've been waiting, you know, just to get this whole story told, and I was e always eager for it. And what did you think of this uh, movie? Do you think it had a satisfying conclusion? Oh, yeah. This, like I said, there was a, everything, everything that's in the book was in this. He, he, he had, still didn't leave anything out. He did everything, because mostly, a lot of times in movies, the book has more than the movies, but yeah, he... He, he put everything that was in the book in it, plus more. The cinematography and everything looked real good, and the action looked real good. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of CGI. You could tell like stuff was like computer uh, morphed in and everything. But uh, but yeah, every, everything looked like really really good. Yeah. Now you brought up some interesting points that I want to talk about. I think the for this movie looked very good looking out of all three of these movies. I think the, the like in the beginning, like the pastel colors looked really good. And yeah. I gotta say, I think this is out of the three of them. This one, I, I, got, I probably gotta go back and look at the other movies again, but I, this is movie I really enjoyed. Um, I think as a movie going experience out of all three of these movies, because mm. for me, um, I thought this movie was very well paced, and like I said, yeah. there were the coloring of the cinematography was really good. The pro yeah. With the pacing, the problem I had with the other two movies is I felt like there were moments that um, kind of dragged, and the problem yeah. I had with the second one was that I thought the ending kept going on and on. I'm like, I get I, the point where you hurry up. I kind of fell asleep in the middle of the second one, I remember, and the, the, the film was shot like so dark because half the second one was like in the... Uh, dwarf mine and everything so it was a darker uh, set and all that and it kind of got boring when there was just dialogue until like the end but uh, but yeah this was more fast paced I mean this was about the bat the big battle and the five armies showing up and mm -hmm. yeah and I think yeah and I think it's also more of an accessible film because this movie touches on prejudice because all the different you know uh, characters and races, you know, kind of have a prejudice against one another. Right. Um, it also touches a bit about, you know, greed and stuff. And I think the characters, you know, definitely, when they're trying to decide whether to go to war or not, I think there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of that in real life. Like, for example, uh, Thorin, um, by this point, has kind of been getting a dick, you know, starting to become a little bit greedy, and he's kind of lost who he was, and he yeah. wants to, he's willing to, you know, start a war, and the Wood Elf King has jewels in there that he's willing to fight, go to war for yeah. just to get, and then there's Bard, who doesn't want a war, and wants to see if there can be some sort of peace, you know, to go it's on a, beforehand, so it, these characters yeah. are all different. It's almost like the gold is like a metaphor for, like, the wars nowadays over like oil and all that type of stuff. The, the way it, the way it seemed, it's like a good movie for these times. There are two I problems know. I had with this movie, and one of them I've been saying the whole time. This movie has Lord of the Rings prequel references that I don't think belong. Yeah, in the movie. I wish they like had like done for, that. like for example. I mean, if you've seen the first movie, you know. Um, uh, Christopher Lee's and uh, Kate Blanchett's character shows up, and I feel like that's. The thing is, Tolkien wrote The Hobbit first, and then yeah. when the book became a success, his publisher was like, can you make a sequel? And he started working on the sequel, and then it got bigger and bigger to the, right. the trilogy. I mean, I think all these things like, this is a Lord of the Rings prequel th references thrown at you. Yeah, I, mean, well, I, think they, I think they stopped the story from going forward. I th there's one scene in here near the beginning that I don't think adds ad to the movie yeah. at all. And I'm like, look, well, can you just move on with the story? I don't they care did about this. this stuff. They did this so that you can, like... It's it's like how they made the, the prequel to Star Wars a few years ago. They did this so people can watch these three Hobbit films first and then watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy that's been out for a while, and it'll all make sense. And another problem like, I had was um, Billy Connolly uh, plays a character in this movie. He's a new character. Yeah. His dialogue, I don't know if it was me, his dialogue dialogue kind of sounded out of place, like it's something like he would say, like, I don't think, it just didn't fit in with the language of 
you know, Tolkien's yeah. word, like he's like, let's go kill these bastards! In his Scottish accent, it sounds like something yeah. he would say, or it's, it's from a different movie, and I felt like it was out of place. That was almost kind of like something out of like, uh, like Dungeons and Dragons, Dragonlance type stuff, how the dwarves talk, because the, the dwarves and that, they swear a one lot. Thing that I, one more thing I did love about this movie, is that even though there's a lot, this is a there's a long lengthy battle sequences. Yeah. This movie does not glorify war. It reiterates that people do die, and there's some yeah. characters that we kind of grow attached to that end up getting killed it's during common. the battle. And a lot of action scenes, you know, in a lot of movies, they just do battle scenes. You're like, oh, cool, wow! But this one reiterates to the audience, actually, you know, that it doesn't glorify battles. You know, people. It was actually a little bit of. It was actually a little bit bloodier in this one than most times because most. Throughout the most of it, even the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it was like mostly comic book violence. But this one got a little more, uh, got a little bit better. Hey, out of all three of these movies, I think I enjoyed this one the most, and I am gonna go ahead and recommend it in theaters. I'd say yeah. it's. A, I think this is a satisfying. I gotta version. recommend it because, like I said, with the other two, it's all. I consider this all one film, even though it's in, broken down into three parts. It's all one film. Unless you watch all three, you're not going to get it because it's like the beginning to the end. Because, like I said, I hope they bring out just a thing where it's all one movie, just like they did with Lord of the Rings, the extended cut, where there was no, where it's separate discs, but it's all one in one box. Yeah, I I think I enjoyed this one the most. I would probably put the first one second, and I did the middle one was the one I didn't completely enjoy. I think this movie would have been, like I said, I think this movie would have been much better if they didn't throw in the. Lord of the Rings characters that they weren't in the first book, and I felt like they didn't add these scenes. New scenes did not add to anything. They had to. Do, they had to do it in order to watch it in order, so that it would it would lead up to the Lord of the Rings. That's how. That's what he was trying to do. So. Yeah. I just felt just, like just like in Star Wars. So. Okay, well, thanks very much for watching. Go ahead and post your comments on the movie if you have seen it. And if you're interested, uh, check out some other reviews of movies on our main page. Thank you for watching.